I can, and we are now recording for the um, Thursday, September 16th risk meeting. Um, things that are on the agenda today, I don't know if everybody was here when I shared the link, but I'll make sure I do that again right now. Yeah, can you, can can you put share your name the in there? Can you show, share the OSSNA slide link on the... Um, uh... I have it in PowerPoint right now, but I can quick okay. upload it. I can quick upload it to uh, Google Drive. Okay. Can I beat you? You you already uploaded it to Google Drive. I'm oh. I'm just gonna put a link directly to the, the file. Okay, that works. Request for access already sent. Oh. Okay, so what? So are you looking for comments on this? Yeah, on this so I try to. Yeah, so um, I, I try to incorporate the feedback that I got early on. And oh, I see. Sorry, I, I shared the drive version that I opened. You sent a real PowerPoint. Yeah, I, I sent an old. Yeah, the PowerPoint, the one in the. So I'm sharing what it really is today. Okay. So you want to present it and us to comment on it so you can improve it, right? Yeah, and I'd like, I th and, you know, Sophia, if you're available during this time, I know you're not listed in the program, but. Um, when, when is your session? Uh, excellent question. Oh, I can look it up. <clears throat> My talk right now, I think, is Monday at 1. So after that, I was going to. I don't know, do what I feel comfortable doing in terms of attending sessions or hiding in my hotel room. Yeah. All right, I got a comment on the first slide. Okay. Um, Are you in, you're in edit mode. You can just go click and edit. Yeah, uh, but I was gonna take a minute here and just upload it. Well, if we're if we're if we're just gonna see it, um, maybe that should happen after. Just let's let's walk through. We we have limited okay. time. We have we yep. had some problems starting up, and I understand that. But let's yep. let's get let's moving. Go. Okay, so slide and one. And you can upload the uh, the the improved deck yep. somewhere. Gonna, okay, um, so I will. Just to confirm, the title that I see in the program is different than this already. What's the title in the program? Uh, a complex web of open source software dependencies risk. I would put an and in there, even though there wasn't one in the original title. And, and risk? Yeah. OK. I Already. See, that's the only talk you're doing. Yeah, David A. Wheeler, please. David A. Wheeler. David A. Wheeler. No, is there a period? Is there a? There is a period after that, right. yes. OK. There's also another David Wheeler. There are there's actually a... a whole bunch of them. Uh -huh. Well, if you remember the film Fletch, David, and I no. refer to you because you're only you're probably only a person on the call who's seen it. Um, he talks about Harry S. Truman. Just the S didn't actually stand for anything. That's fine. So I, there was uh, no I, period after Harry S. Truman because it didn't actually stand for anything. His, his middle designation oh. was actually S. No, but the A does stand for something, okay. uh, but it's okay. Let's move on, next. <laughs> okay. Should, by the way, should you be first, Sean, if you're giving the presentation? Uh, you know, I'm trying to like act as an agent of the group. And yeah, you know what? But you're the speaker. You're the speaker. But you're okay. the speaker. It's it, it's. I think it's it's less confusing if the speaker's listed. For, oops, Michael Scovet. There you go. Or maybe you put Sean Goggins and then like with the Chaos Working Group or something like that. Because I think you yeah. should. I think you might confuse people if you. Yeah. Have to okay. Make yeah, Sean Goggins with the rest of the Chaos Working Group and then in Prens. Risk Working Group, and now you put in Prens. There you go. All these people. All I mean, and these are the people who've made the most contribution. I tried to think if there was anyone else I should name, and I couldn't come up with anyone. Yeah, so now, now delete the text before the name Sean Goggins. Ah, uh, yes, I suppose that becomes redundant, doesn't it? Okay. 
V is lowercase. These. V, T H E, with V. All right. All uh -oh. right. Look at this. We're already beating up your slide and you haven't gotten to the content yet. I know, right? Okay. So the next thing is just kind of um, giving you a Sith Lord over here. Just <laughs> I know. You honest. <laughs> These, this is not <laughs> the presentation I was looking for. So, yeah. <laughs> so Lord or lady, <laughs> maybe you're <a> Sith lady. <laughs> You know a lot of female sits, but you you know that they must have had some, right? I think, uh, I think they probably wouldn't be last long without them. <laughs> if if you look at some of the latter Star Wars, they actually work a lot toward gender neutral language in the dialogue. All right, <clears throat> focus, focus. Uh, okay. Sorry, it's my fault to start with. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. So these are just sort of laying out some really high level things, like what indicates dependency risk. How can we quantify them? Um, what are the results of having measurements for things like, and I said, um, this is like take, this is like Oops. measurements. I just think measurements for now. Um, and then what, what is useful over time and the value of any particular measurement. So just, here is where I kind of want to indicate that we, and I think maybe like a slide indicating the chaos of all the different directions that we were getting things from might might be helpful. I think yeah, it, to even do that up here, we could, I want to, it's not pedantic when we're trying to, to provide it as a scope, which is one conversation we were having a, so like our, our glossary of what it means to be a dependency and what it means to be risk. And because I think there you do want to sort of provide a thousandth of view before we provide where we focus just to offer that out as context. So it's not being pedantic, yeah. it's explaining how we scoped it. So, okay. So what I add, what would I add? Um, so like, I guess I want to say defining dependency, but what does dependency mean in the context of open source? How are we thinking about what risk means? I think we talked about that in a couple of meetings ago. We did. I like to walk into these assuming that people nobody know knows nothing. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> Even though most people probably know something, it's just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think, is this the place where I, I was going to save it till the end, but there's. You know, once you start to do this stuff, there's a large collection of cacophonic tools that people have to decode and walk through. And there's different tools for different things and multiple tools for the same thing. I don't know if I'd get into tools. I feel like it okay. might be a bit of a, a bit much. Hole. All right. Unless others have strong feelings. Anything else about this slide? see the meat all right so yeah, eventually you might want to slide before this really what are dependencies or and why they're important but if you're going to about if you're about to talk about them then don't worry about it I'm yeah the big put one to be put in the notes yeah, it, 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 on slide or and i'll just leave that as a placeholder for now all right and we can delete it at the end so i try to walk through First, the concept of I have an open source software project that has a collection of direct dependencies. Oh, no, no. Okay, you got your terminology wrong here. Transitive is the entire set. If you're going to have it showing like this, the what you're labeling transitive are the second order. Okay. And then the third order. But usually only people care about is transitive, the, the full, you know, Tell me everything you depend on. Are the are, no? They're not the sec. No, transitive is all the dependencies, direct and indirect. Okay, if you really need to uh, to show it like this, I mean, you could say. I don't need to. I just tried to yeah. pick something that. Yeah, would... you know what? I don't think you need to say transitive and um, tertiary there. Tertiary ends up being transitive. 
Like basically well, no, all- no. The, uh, tertiary is a subset of transitive. Right. Okay. You got the 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 direct, and, you know, and, and the first order, second order, and so on. But nobody's going to call it that. It's just the whole set is the transitive dependencies. Okay. So I think you can get rid of the term transitive dependencies there and tertiary dependencies there. And then you could have a long line that says everything here is the transitive dependencies. It's so the, the whole set. All right. So this whole set is transitive. Yeah. These are just all notes. To, yeah. What, what's the box on the left anyway? Um, this one here. Mm-hmm. That's just intended if uh, for the addition of notes. If, if we think that we need them, I can delete that box. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that might be a good place to put the comment, actually. Yeah, I was thinking okay. you know, all, all the, you know, the set of all dependency, you know, transitive dependencies are the whole set of dependencies, direct and indirect. I'll reword this. This is uh, in contradiction to what we have defined in our upstream dependencies, where we have defined transitive dependencies as a uh, uh, indirect dependencies, that is dependencies beyond first order dependencies. Yeah. Oh, no, so we did uh, not include the direct dependencies? Yeah, I think no. so. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it, regardless, transit dependencies are not the, just the second orders. Yeah. So, you know, transitive so, dependencies is the set of all the indirect at all levels. There you go. You know what? Why don't you just copy our definition? We fought on this. All right. <laughs> um, somebody have it handy. Yes, it's I in the chat. It in the- okay, you're yeah, amazing. Vinod has, sa- Vinod has saved the day already. All right. But since I'm sharing now, I have to figure out how to access there it is chat. Or you can open the transitive dependency metric, like up the support dependency I and found copy it. from there. Yeah. I found it. All right, I'll um, I'll make edits to that as becomes necessary. So, but what I'm trying to illustrate with absolutely the wrong terminology is that you have your direct dependencies and then second and third order dependencies, which are transitive. And sometimes you have circular dependencies where this library that's right. third order here uh, or second order here depends on, is a dependency for one of your first order dependencies. Uh, Sean, can I propose something, uh, an image, I guess, Sophia, you last time shared where there was a blogs from some tech person showing the dependency on a, depending on one pillar of those. Do you remember that image? Um, it's going to show my whole screen, so I'd have to go back and forth. Um, if I go to the notes. So it was, in a, it was something shared last time? No, it was shared like a couple of uh, weeks back. So uh, I guess, Sophia, you shared or somebody, there was an author who published these comics and there was a comic on dependency that all these big blogs are depending on one pillar. Oh, that one. Every, was, so yeah. That. That's was like it, KCD comic. That is exactly the, we re- the guy in Nebraska? Image. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. is you, Sean. Yeah. That was no, me. you're in Missouri, sorry. Are you in a, no. Are you in Nebraska? Am I making this up? I'm not, no, Matt's in Nebraska. I am in Missouri. Uh, I knew somebody was in Nebraska. Yeah, it would be but Matt's in Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah. Yep, I am in Nebraska. So. so if you post that image, I think that will give a like good picture of what you're talking all about. Okay. Yeah, that's a, just a suggestion. Yeah, if you want to send that to me, Vinod, um, let's put X case, yeah. X, 
X, K, C, D. Sorry, or in the chat, brother. Yep, this one, perfect. Huh. Oh, I'm sharing again, so I have to go down here to see the chat. Oh, this one. Um, I would say in the interest of time, Sean, yeah. could you give us the outline so that we know? Sure. Like, we get stuck on the slides, but I want yeah. to kind of your full thought process. So the, the outline is introduce these different kinds of dependencies and the complexity, and then talk about a couple of metrics that have different applications and then one specific application. So this is the overview. And then I talk about lib years. So lib years is, you know, each direct dependency has a number of lib years and lib years are the cumulative age of all dependencies calculated using the difference between the release in use and the date of the most recent release. And then totaling them all up. So I, I provide an example of one of the metrics that we use. And I use, I use the same visual to populate things like years. And then I go to a metric that we haven't discussed a lot except when Dwayne's been on the meetings, but it's a metric that matters a lot to him. And it's slightly different than lib years because it's what he calls technical debt. And it's the cumulative age of all dependencies calculating, calculating the difference between the current date and the date of the most recent release. What? If you're not on the most recent release. Is that right? That's right. The um, current date. Right. So if if date of date of most recent release, if you're not on it. Um, so and he took took me it took him a minute to explain that to me. But let's say I'm using a 14 year old library. Um, I still have a 14 year old technical debt if there's been a release, even if it was two months later than the release I'm using, that's like 13 years and 10 months. So if I'm not on the most recent release, I have some technical debt and there's an age on it. And his team finds that potentially more useful than Libier. And so I thought it was an interesting distinction. I think the distinction is interesting in terms of explaining how in any metric that we propose, you have to make it work for your own context. And that's an example yeah. of a team that is using something very similar, but making it work for their specific need. I think the only concern I have with that is technical debt tends to have a broader interpretation that's used quite frequently. Maybe again, this is, I can't unlive the, the analyst days, but we use the, tech, the, the term technical debt a lot to describe sort of the, the older skill sets and tech like class of technologies that mm -hmm. not only are yep. getting outdated, but that you are, they're losing supportability from both the vendor as well as the staffing side. So it, 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 it's hilarious because there, there is someone who created this term technical debt and he doesn't use either of those definitions. The yeah, original it's... meaning of technical debt what is basically um, is the analogy of a house. I'm going to intentionally do things that will cause some long term costs in order to get the software done now. Right. And I'm now going to have to go back and fix things later, just like ideally you would do everything perfectly the first time. Right. In the same way that ideally, whenever you see a house, you pull out your cash and you buy it. Since few people just pull out their cash and buy it, you're going to go into debt and the goal is to pay it off in time so that you don't go into, you, you don't get in the situation where the debt gets worse over time. Right, uh, so you're it, a slumlord and you can't uh, afford to do improvements. I'm just thinking about interest. Yeah, uh, that's exactly right. That 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 is why the phrase technical debt was created with that phrase. The idea is you're going to make some shortcuts in order to get it out the door. The yeah. question is, are you creating, are, are those shortcuts ones you can pay off later? Or in fact, are those shortcuts over time making things worse? 
Yeah. Interest is interesting because we really haven't had that as a factor in home purchases for 13 years. <laughs> I think the, the short version here is I guess there's a lot, there's going to be more interpretations of this term than ditch the term technical debt. Yeah. So you can say that they call it this, but maybe acknowledge Wait, that. Uh, wh why do we need this slide? Stop. It's not it's, one of the, it's not one of the measures we're putting out. So you're right. It, it, so why, why are we talking about this? It's, it's confusing. Exam, it's not on our list. Why are we talking about this? The re there, so there's two reasons. One, it, it in the ASPO discussions that I've had, this is Libier resonates less well than this particular metric. So Dwayne is not the only person that gets this or what it is in the in a different way, and that's running an ASPO. So that's one reason. The other is there's a high degree of similarity between Libier. And, and what we're calling technical debt, but which we'll call something else. And I think making sure that people recognize that, you know, oh, I recognize this, that that's what I do, knowing that it's not what they do and trying to highlight for the, for the folks there that we have many metrics that are very similar that we call the same thing. And so one of the things chaos is trying to do is come up with standard definitions. So this and this, will probably compress into a single Libier metric that maybe has some parameters that you can apply. So I'm trying yeah, or, to- or, or call it a different name. I think yeah. you ought to be careful. I, I, I'm fine with using different, uh, different things, but naming is, although it's hard, is important. I, I agree. And, so and I don't, think- Don't call it something where it already has another established meaning. <laughs> I agree. And, and I won't. So the, the thing is, these two things are very similar. And if you look at them uncarefully, as most people will, it's hard to tell the difference. And yeah. And so it's a really a conversation about making sure that one of the challenges in this space that we encountered was getting on the pa same page that all the words that we were using meant the same thing to each of us, because there's a securities and vulnerabilities perspective. There's an OSPO perspective. There's a maintainer perspective. There's a foundation perspective when you're overseeing a large collection of repositories. And we use similar terms that they don't always mean the same thing. Right. Can, can I suggest if that's your point on yeah. six, put a little yellow box that says not the same. No, no, not on lib years. Stop, stop, stop. What do you, uh, I don't my, know what you're doing uh, here. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, go go to the yeah. other, you're in the wrong slide. Yeah. Yeah, go to that one, put a little yellow box and say just not the same and, the, and you can explain. Yeah, I, I like that because I, I think it is it's talking about what we're trying to do as an organization and chaos and then also how we're taking a more general approach because you have to make it work for you. Right. Like so acknowledging all the different personas and use cases and this is an example where an OSPO interprets it this way or implements a similar metric to accomplish this purpose and I think that's a really right. nice like it provides something tangible in addition to just the concept. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's. Oops, I guess. I, I will know, I've never seen this measure before. That doesn't mean it's not, doesn't exist or that's not a better one. I'm still it's, gonna have to think through that, but it, I'll it, note that, you know. It took Dwayne a non-trivial amount of time to explain it to me. Um, so where, where are these tools that measure this though? Like White Source is using it. Not White Source. Um, uh, there's, it's escaping me. There's a there's a tool that he uses for that does some of this analysis that works or doesn't work occasionally, depending on its mood. Um, that does analysis of these kinds of things for him. So that's that slide. And then the next slide is trying to overlay securities and vulnerabilities. Um, basically, a just big red box, same stuff as before but now okay these are the these are the dependencies that have different kinds of securities and vulnerabilities that have to be addressed i think you could illustrate this without the giant box but instead just color in the boxes red yeah yeah all right yeah i agree that would be much yeah. you know all, all those extra lines and so on are are, are confusing busy. instead of helpful <laughs> like the same thing per, with the permutation of like now you can see the chain of problems yeah, yeah and, and frankly i i would make at least one of the third levels red 
because that's where people often don't notice. They may hear about the direct ones, mm -hmm. but it, 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 it's yeah. those multiple level down tiers that, you know, yeah. when, when we did the critical project stuff, the ones that leapt to the top were projects that most of us had never heard of. The most so, used projects are the ones that but, are so far down, like, nobody hears about them. A lot of the breaches can be traced back to those tertiary or third and fourth level dependencies. So I guess exactly. From an illustration perspective, if we say color in one of the tertiary dependencies red, does that mean we should color in the full chain as red? I, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I would just color in a couple of the intermediaries because technically, <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking about this as an application level. In many, many circumstances, it's the application that decides exactly what versions. Uh, JavaScript, as always, a weird exception. But for most programming languages, the application decides the version for each of the transit dependencies. So you can have A depend on B, and I depend. And A says I depend on a version of B, but the application happened to bring in a vulnerable version of B. So it wasn't yeah. A's fault that B. It, just because A said use B, it didn't say you must use this vulnerable version. Okay, I think that makes sense. I mean, it does make sense. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what's weird is that in Java, well, in NPM land, you can actually lock from a particular library to another. Um, and in many others, you normally don't, but. Okay, so you're right. just making okay. notes and you're gonna make changes. Okay, go. Yep, yeah, yeah. As opposed to like what, having you watch me make changes, because I realize okay. my my work is entertaining, but you can you can you can watch me on um, uh, what is that streaming service? Stitch. Twitch. Twitch. You can watch me on you can watch me on Twitch later working. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So here I, 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 want... I might not. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. So so here I'd start I I've sort of started one. Um, but the idea is from an OSPO perspective, the question that's coming up is, this is great. Show me all of this on a project by project basis, but I have 11,000 projects in my ecosystem and th that I'm using in one way or another in my enterprise. And it's really great to know all of this information one project at a time. But if I'm gonna decide where I spend money and resources, I need to look across all of my portfolio and understand across that portfolio, which of these dependencies in this example exist across the largest number of portfolios. And then of those which pose the greatest risk, which is, which has the most vulnerability. And then I can make a decision. If I've got 11,000 projects that I'm overseeing, I can make a decision about where to commit my resources based on the dependencies where I have the most like enterprise scale problem. So there's an OSPO view of, of dependencies that is not centered on the project, which is where we have talked a lot of the time. And so I wanted to present this view of the OSPO that this is an entirely different perspective because this is the information that an OSPO needs because they have finite resources and thousands of projects, and all of which depend on many of the same things. So where are those dependencies most prevalent? Or which dependency collectively across my enterprise is the biggest impact, that has the biggest footprint? Does that make sense? Again, trying to draw out that here's another perspective on dependencies that isn't neat, neat, neatly and nicely tied to an individual project. No, um, I mean, I think the like the subtext is it's always the like you need to weight this per your own context. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're constantly doing exercises like this. It's still huge. <laughs> But in terms of what we care more or less about will change depending on what's more important in that given moment. It could be could discontinue a product and maybe then we don't care as much about that dependency or maybe something launches and now is a real product and now we care a lot more about it and we didn't before. Right. 
So it's that, it's that risk profiling piece. Honestly, I'll be surprised if we get through the full with 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 interactions between the audience. I'll be surprised if we get a lot farther than this, because <laughs> I I have more slides. But I say I mean I think most of the sessions are twenty five minutes. Oh no, yours is fifty minutes. Yeah. How'd you get fifty minutes? Mine's twenty five. I have no idea, but I mean. <laughs> My, my usual approach when I, there's a longer session is to get people to talk about, like have like a, have a few breakouts where folks in the session are talking to each other and making it concrete. And then we bring that back because A, it, people aren't bored sitting on their laptops and B, I think we get new ideas from that. I guess in the researcher perspective, then what ideas do you want to get? So I'd like to know what other scenarios exist in the, in the lives of all of the people who, who the, the three people who show up um, that they want to see developed by us. You know, so I look at this a little bit as a perspective eliciting activity and these, these won't be long, but I think there'll be questions about each of these things because I, I think we haven't fully developed the common definition and we certainly haven't had it widely accepted. So on things like Libyar, it's a little bit about socializing our first metric, our first our MVM, and then talking, talking about things that are related to it that are important. Now you're not talking at all about the other one that we uh, created, just the list of the upstream and downstream dependency. The yeah, up, just the, yeah, just identifying counts upstream. So yeah, um, you're right. You're right, and I, I think we can you know, upstream dependencies might be a, the what we bring up before we get into the magic of Libyers. Yeah, because that that's a simpler one, and yeah. also. Um, I, I think it's probably important to note which ones we have defined developed, yeah. and, and, and this one is a, this is not developed, but it's important to note that there's another alternative that has been discussed. I, I don't know how you want to introduce that. It's a minimum, it's, it's on our list of minimum viable metrics. What this technical debt thing, uh, technical debt, not necessarily, but Libyar. Right, um, I was saying that we, we ought to, uh, the, we've developed to, we should identify, give, give ourselves credit for that. Yeah. And then note that, hey, you know, in discussions, there was a variant and it's important to understand that these are not the same things. Maybe we'll define that also, but you know, the, the, you know one of the importance, the, the, to me that what chaos brings is this more rigor. Um, yep. So that, that's kind of the, the point there is, yes, it's got to be slower than folks who are just trying to make up stuff and quickly measure something, but the goal is to have a common just definition. I agree. More rigor to it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think I, and, and this, I'm not sure where this. Um, By the way, is that somewhere noted? Do ever, does everybody know what chaos is who's being presented to? I doubt it. Uh, probably not. Yeah, you probably ver uh, first explain what is chaos about. And you know why? Why rigorously define metrics? I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Because it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Consistently. Because I think, I th because I think the value that we bring is is. In in many respects, it's the consistency. We may not have the right definition of a metric, but we have a consistent one. So that when you're doing a metrics project or trying to find the key indicators in your environment, if you call it a commit, if you call it a libier, it you may not have the right perfect definition, but it's a consistent one. It's gonna be the same as somebody else calls a libier, that, that the taxonomy of metrics that we've developed is what is enabling communication about them. in my humble opinion. I don't know what is the allergen that of, of choice in my environment this year at this time of year, but I'm allergic to whatever it is. 
It's bad everywhere. I got a full blown asthma attack from it this week. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's like my allergies just last week it just kicked up off the charts. I think we're missing a word on this slide. Metrics like that. Which line are you pointing to? I mean, that that's better. That's something. Yeah, it might not be the right thing. Uh, do you want to focus on the language or the metric in, in this call out? I don't know what the question is. I don't understand the question. Uh, so in terms of the mission of chaos being developing a common language. Common or, metrics. It's it's common a metric. common metrics. Yeah. The, the, that's I think that's the main call out. Well, then I think what you have makes sense. Okay. Metrics, maybe in a. Full or something like that. Well, if you have the logo, you can remove chaos and. Right. You're right. Yeah, I'll be logoing most of this. Is chaos, is it an acronym? It is. And community. Analytics open source software. It's community worth help. writing it out because I feel like there's always, if someone's new to chaos, there's always the like, is this the chaos engineering group? And then I have to say, no, it's not. Because <laughs> it has a very specific interpretation. Yeah. I think you could put it on the second slide, on the definition side. This one has a lot of stuff on it. OK, I'll move it. But now I've already started typing it. Um, All right, close enough. And we have like two minutes left. So where I went after this was, I was gonna talk about our minimum viable metrics and the things that we're working on a little bit more. And I wanna do a tool slide. I, I've got some of the tool slides from the presentation that we went through a while ago. And I think if I recall, there's some pieces of this that um, weren't exactly right, but these are the key points that we talked about making. And so maybe this isn't the right graphic. Um, but we have, we, these are kind of the factors that end up coming up in the discussion of dependencies. This is the outcome of a brainstorming session on a previous call. Remember this? Um, I guess first question is why translations in the in the subject? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> honestly, I don't remember why we had that out there because the others make sense to me defending risks and vulnerabilities, but yeah, uh, say, take that take that out because I don't remember why it was there either. I think this is a better brainstorming slide than the other ones. Well, because I think there is yeah. enough context on what we've already talked about, so if you if you just start ask people to start sharing their yeah. there. I don't know how many learn new stuff versus saying presenting either like this or slide 13 that have a lot more rigor in terms of fleshing out the so would you present these topics. would these be slides to do brainstorming on after presenting the high level or would you start with this low level? Um, My do high level first. Yeah. I think it's nice to start simple with the with the specific metric, defining a specific case and how that case is used and implemented, and then why you this is only one view. If you're looking yeah. at cross portfolio as an OSPO, then maybe you're thinking about weighting across all of the projects and the dependencies of those projects. So you're thinking more comprehensively as from portfolio management versus going very deep in one project, depending on the needs, like again. Um, so either depending on where you want to route them, you could have a prompt on stakeholders, you could have a prompt on themes, you could have a prompt on categorization. Like there's so many different areas that you could prompt. Mm -hmm. um, so I think 
somewhere in between slide 12 and 13, you have all the possible prompts that you could have. Yeah. Uh, so either you pick out prompts that are related to the things that you've presented and then <clears throat> provide a narrower scope for a prompt. I think if you just open the floor without more context, it's it yeah. snowball. Um, but I don't know, that, that's up to you, you and your- No, these are great so. suggestions. I also have no idea how many people are going to show up to these things. So if it's I, just, I don't either. If another if, food, it's, it's, it's a lot of crickets. And if it's a high, if it's a high, if it ends up being highly virtual in participation, then, you know, that whole thought could go out the window completely. Yeah. And the rest of this, these are just from the last time I went through this with you and I, I'm going to make these more visual um, and add some description. Um, this just ends up, and there's some questions on security and some other points, but so this is where it is right now. And I'll send another version out shortly. Uh, are you feeling nervous about this being our presentation? A little bit. It doesn't have a lot of content. Yeah. So is it is is more content good? Is it or what I worry about with more content you got 50 is like minutes. confusing people. Yeah. Yeah, you, you got 50 minutes. I don't think you have 50 minutes of material. Um Yeah. We have a ton of content that can be put in here. I, mean, um, I don't want to put in content just because hey, we need to film the So time. like but, when I like when I look at this, this is probably like five or six slides to go through each of these perspectives. But now we're but now you're looking it? at risk, not just dependencies. So you've right. kind of gone beyond the scope of the initial Oh right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um so this so this, you know, looking at the different perspectives that each of these stakeholders take on it is a is one. I think going through our minimum viable metrics in the discussion is is there's yeah, a lot there. Where, which direct? I mean, so of those two, looking at these different perspectives across outside of our org group, or looking at. I I think first of all, you're you're missing some broader context. Uh, okay. What is chaos? Why do you care about metrics? You know, the kind of the stuff we said at the beginning before you even. Yeah. You know, I mean, you you can show the picture early, but it's the whole, you know, uh, you know, what, what is chaos? Why do we care about metrics and why do we care about measuring about um, defining them precisely? I also think you could take some inspiration from what the blurb is in, in the content overview. So yeah. you had presented sort of a, a higher level structure of what to measure, how to measure dependency mm -hmm. risk. And then in order to do that, you really have to understand your own context through the goal question metric approach. And so yeah. I think you have all the pieces in here, but it's kind of, yeah. right now it's a story versus frame and something that's repeatable. Yeah. So I think you could get value in structuring this in, in an approach that can be repeated for other things. Where here we're talking about the approach, we're talking about the approach and we can apply it, dependency risk analysis to that approach. Right. But by laying it out as approach, then the approach itself is part of the content. That's just one idea. That's a yeah. great idea. And, I, and I, I would, often, I would, I've been doing this so long, I often forget the chaos story and why we do what we do. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what you don't have mm. is there, there's a, a, a more than a little detail that in the definitions mm -hmm. that's not there. If yeah. you're going to present, I mean, really, the output of this group right now is those two definitions, including some of those details. Yep. You know, talk about it. That's the one okay. thing this group has done. Talk about it. Yeah. So you you have this high level intro and that's fine, and yep. it's fine if you want to do a contrast with some other metrics that you know maybe this group will do in the future. Yeah. But I I think you also need to drill in and here's what we did. We looked at this and we identified these variants, um, and you know that's really the story of what this group has done. So tell it. Yeah. Fair. These are I gosh this is gold because I've been so deep in it I didn't see these these stepped back perspectives. Okay. 
Thank you. Hey, I'm, I'm happy to uh, d dump work on you and Linda Lee. I think this isn't work. This is just, I mean, it's like, it's not like any of that content is any harder for me to get than what's in there. So, well, well in fact, stealing from the things that we've worked on is hopefully not too hard at all. I mean, you, you got uh, it. You, yeah, you, you helped yeah. write it. So you just got to get it into this deck because that's the output of this group. But tell them the output. All right. I thank you, everybody. Good luck. Right. We didn't well, get to the other ones, but that's okay. I'll, well, I'll, I'm gonna. I know I've got some direction now, and I will. I will go forth and make the changes and send it around. So thank okay. you. Good luck. Hey, thanks everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.